What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we're gonna be installing Powerfold mirrors on the Mark 8 Golf R, and the process should be exactly the same for Mark 8 GTI. In order to do the Powerfold mirrors, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're going to need the Powerfold mirrors. These have a whole bunch of things going on inside, including connectors for both the heated mirrors and the light for the blind spot monitor. In addition to that, we're gonna need the switch with the fold function built in. All this stuff came from our good buddy Paul over at ShopDap, and of course, I will link this stuff and all the tools and everything you're gonna need for this job down below. When it comes to the nuts and bolts of installing the mirrors, a few basic hand tools, and you got it covered. Now to activate everything, you're gonna need a scan tool. There are some pretty interesting security locks on the electrics module on these newer cars, which makes it a little bit more challenging than previous generations. We'll go in depth into that later on in the video. When we look at our passenger side door panel or our driver side door panel, the fasteners are all in the same spot. You have one behind the uh, door open handle, one behind the grab handle, and a quarter turn down at the bottom, pretty much center on the door trim panel. Something that I've noticed on Mark 8, a lot of this plastic feels ultra soft, so masking tape it is. We want to be extra careful, not doink up our brand new car. What I'm also going to do, put a little masking tape on our pocket screwdriver. That way we help protect our door panel. So before we take our door panel off, we want to do something that I found to be super valuable and that's put our window down. This is gonna make taking the door panel off so much easier. Back behind the door open handle is a trim cover. You can see it right here. At the back bottom corner is a little cutout and that's the part that we're gonna use our pocket screwdriver covered with masking tape to pry it out. I'm also going to put a little bit of tape on the handle itself just to be sure we don't scratch it up. This may end up being overkill, but I'd rather overkill than underkill and scratch up our car. So we're gonna take our tape covered screwdriver, we're gonna hold our handle open, we're gonna pry our cover out. Once you have it popped out a little bit, you can take a plastic trim tool and just flush it out. The way this mounts in is there's little hooks on the top side and then clips down at the bottom. So it sits in there like this. Here's our little notch. That's where you gotta pry. Now we got our T30 exposed. Go ahead and take that out. Next we have our cover right in the door pulley closey part. I'm gonna go ahead and tape up underneath right where we're gonna be prying. If you notice right in the center there, there's another recess. That's where we're gonna pry. Once you have it popped up like that, then you can get your plastic and pry it away. Just like that bit on the top, we have our clips at the bottom and our tabs up top. So it actually slides up and in, hooks into the top and then snaps in at the bottom. That then reveals our T30. We'll go ahead and get that guy out of there. Now for the bottom one, it's simply a plastic quarter turn. It's located up underneath the door panel, pretty much center of the door panel. What I like to do with this one is take a 10 millimeter closed end box wrench and just rotate it around so that it lines up with the opening. Now it is time for one of two of the worst parts of doing this entire job, and that's taking off this door panel. There's pretty much three clips on each side that need to pop out. Volkswagen recommends using trim tools like these in order to kind of get behind the panel and pop it loose, and that way works really good. There is one special clip that you wanna make sure you pay attention to, and it's up here. I actually like to push this clip up and slide it out because you have to push the door panel up anyway. This part and taking off the mirror glass are pretty much the two worst parts of this whole job. Really wanna take your time here and make sure you're being careful. I like to start at the bottom, in the middle, right where that quarter turn was. And I like to get around that quarter turn so you're not prying up against it. Then I'll get my hands behind the panel and just kinda pop it loose. See, I got this side done. Then kinda do the same thing on the inner part. Now we got our panel completely loose, then tap it up. You can kind of free it from the door. Now you got a bunch of wires and stuff behind it. Don't just let the door panel hang. You want to hold it while you take off the wires. If you have a rolly chair, grab your rolly chair, rolly it under. Then what you can do is you can set the door panel on it and get back behind here to get your connectors. There are a handful of connectors on the back side of the door panel for things like the window switch, the interior lighting, and the door lock button. Those are all really straightforward Volkswagen connectors where you push the lock and then unplug the connector. 
connector. If one's giving you a hard time, push the connector in more, then push the lock and remove the connector. For the inner door cable, at the back side of the cable, there's a small release tab. Press that back towards the outside of the door, slide it away from the door panel, and then you can pull the front piece out of its channel. So here's our passenger side door module. We got all these wires and stuff. The ones for our mirror is this pass through right here. You don't have to do this part that I'm gonna do right now, but I wanna get these connectors out of the way so we can see a little bit better. This one is one we have to disconnect because it's for our mirror. And this one down here is the other one for our mirror. Luckily, these only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about them getting connected in a different place. Now, before we do anything else, this is our wire we're gonna be running out the door and then back in. Grab some of our fishing line, tie it around either one of the connectors. This way, you can pull it out and back in without having to mess around with fishing wires. I like to also put a little tape on there so our guide doesn't come off. Then what I like to do is the other end of our fishing line, or you can use whatever if you don't have fishing line, you string, whatever you got. I'm gonna tape it to the door so that it doesn't end up coming with us accidentally. Now we can push our little rubber grommet back into the door, just like that. Now it is time for the worst part of this entire job, and that's taking off the mirror glass. This always makes me a little uncomfortable ever since I broke two on a beetle many years ago. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw some tape kind of in the housing so we don't scuff the housing up. Even though we're not gonna be using this housing, I sure still don't wanna destroy it in case we ever decide to sell it. Now remember this mirror also has wiring attached to it for the heater. So you can't just yank it out with like all of your muscle and uh, rip it off the car. Gotta be gentle, gotta be careful. Gentle and careful. Also pry like there is no tomorrow. So there's actually a special tool that's supposed to go up between this piece and the glass and like pop it out. And here is where the job went a little bit sideways. And don't worry, you'll see what happened in just a second. What you really wanna do is lower the mirror glass all the way down or out to one side or the other. This gives you quite a bit more room to get either your hands or the removal tool behind the glass. Now on the first time removing the glass, it's gonna be on there super tight. So be extra careful, make sure you pry only instead of rotating the trim tool, which is what I did. And here is the result of that. I broke it. That's what you don't want to do, is break your mirror glass. Just like that. Good job, Charles, you jerk. Well, here we go. Not ideal. I'm feeling pretty dumb about breaking that mirror, so let's call our man Polly D, Polly Dap, that's what that's for, and see if, uh, see if, see how much this is gonna cost me. Hey. Hey, what, what? What's going on? Uh, on a scale of one to me, I'm an idiot, and I broke one of my mirrors trying to take it out to put on this sweet, powerful mirror. I was wondering what a new mirror, passenger side, is gonna cost me. A new mirror for the passenger side of your car. Retail price on a mirror glass, $87.44. Oh. I mean, that's a lot of money, but that's less than I expected it to be. What about those dynamic flashy boys that would probably be a super good thing to install while you're doing power fold mirrors? Do them while you're in there. Since you have the Two. cap off. 46.70 would be the price on shopdap.com. One more question. Do I have any other options for this mirror glass? Well, we can also go with a some e European, European. spherical mirrors. A spherical mirrors, those are the ones with the little line and then like the bendy out on the mirror, right? Better known as blind spot mirrors. And these are a steal for a pair of at 119.98. Oh, that is a much better deal than yeah, the standard. You can break the other one. Okay, will you, uh, I guess send me those aspherecals. I'll send them right out. Well, that cost me 120 bucks, but at least we get to upgrade the mirrors too, right? Okay, let's <laughs> let's keep going. Now that we got that worked out with Paul uh, for my dumbness, we gotta take off our cap. There's two tabs that hold the cap on, one here and one here. You can kind of see that silver peeking through. So the way I usually get this off are I'll take my trim tool and I'll go right here and I'll pry the silver down a little bit and also push the black tab back. You gotta be real careful here, because these can break. Also, while I'm doing that, I'm taking this hand and just pushing towards the front of the car a little bit on it. And we'll come over here, we'll do the same thing. Then you just kind of rock it towards the front of the car. Now you don't wanna, oh, I think I've I taped it on. You don't wanna just shove it 
because there is a connector in this cap for our blind spot monitor. And then we'll disconnect our connector, that out of the way. You have this module right here with the light in it. Make sure you get that disconnected with this little connector with the blue, the blue on it. We pretty much got everything out. We got our connector loose and shoved through the door as much as possible. We have two T30s right here that we need to take out. You want to support the mirror on the front so it doesn't just go flopping out. There is a clip that holds it in, but don't risk it. Uh, just hold it. Also a good opportunity to clean behind that uh, mirror housing as well. Now that we have it unbolted, kind of wiggle it loose. Be real careful you don't scratch your paint up. Then we need to feed our wires through, so you may have to reach like around the door. You can see the wires kind of go around the window track. So get your wiring out. Make sure you don't pull your fishing line all the way through your hole here, otherwise you're in a dilly of a pickle. Then we'll get our tape off of there, get this mirror gone, and get this mirror back in, which really, other than our tape, looks exactly the same. We also wanna make sure we pull our connectors out. This is the one that goes to the blind spot flashy, and then these two, these two are for the heaters, which should go out here. You just wanna make sure that you have them accessible so that it's not buried down in here after you put the cap on. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wiring harness. What I found if you run that fish, fishing line, through the connector like this, it's so much easier to get the, uh, get the connector through the hole. But it really doesn't matter. Whatever you do, just make sure that it's on there. I'm gonna also tape this guy on as well. Pull, pull, make sure she doesn't separate. Now you wanna make sure you feed this wire back through correctly. You should have no problem doing it because of how we ran it, but make sure that both connectors go around the window channel and the grommet does too. Then we're gonna carefully feed our mirror in here. Something you wanna be mindful of, you see on this other mirror, you have this like little clip part and this little dowel part right here. That stuff all has to line up, make sure that the mirror goes in properly. To get it lined up, I found that standing back here and finagling it in works best. You'll know you're lined up right when your bolt holes line up right. When going back together, it's not a bad idea to put a little boop of blue thread locker on the end of here. You'll also notice that there is kind of an alignment shoulder on this bolt that goes in that hole. So what you really wanna make sure you do is you wanna make sure you have this perfectly lined up so you don't doink your car door. I'm not gonna put any blue Loctite on this because we're actually gonna be taking these mirrors off again. I like to start both and make sure that that alignment hole is like in the body of the door and then we can go ahead and snug it down. We are all dialed in here with our mirror installed. Let's get this. Who put this tape on here like a dum dum? Get this tape off of here. We'll get our uh, fishing line off of here. Something you wanna make sure too you do, make sure that your grommet is in all the way, set properly. Go ahead, plug everybody in. Make sure the ones that have the red locks get locked. Luckily, these all only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about messing anybody up. Click. Red lock. Okay, now we're gonna put our door panel on. We'll set it on our little rolly guy. Roll it up to the car. You don't really need to do the rolly guy thing. It just helps support the panel. And we'll get all of our stuff plugged in for the latch. Make sure you tuck it in in the front and then clip it in like that. Behind the door are clips that look like this. When you look at these clips, you need to make sure that this is the position they're in. If they're pushed down, you're gonna need to reset them. What you normally do to reset them is you take this trim tool between here and just kind of wiggle it up. You may also need to sort of squeeze these two pieces together so that they fit up in the top. Next up, we gotta get our panel in. Now, this clip right here that we slid up and out coming apart, we don't need to worry about that. We can just snap it right in. But you do need to make sure that this piece of the door panel here goes in. If you've had a Volkswagen door panel off before, this is gonna be super duper familiar because it's pretty much the same as all the rest of them are. And you can look right through the handle and see your T30 hole. Make sure you're lined up. Give her a little boop. Also not a bad idea before you get this door panel completely installed, check and make sure your things work. For sure, give the handle a pull. You can even latch the door, do it that way. Then what we're gonna do, 
We'll put our T30 in up here. We can go ahead and get our trim back on there. Okay, we'll get our lower T30 in. We can also go ahead and take our tape off and put our little cover back on. Just like that. And finally, the quarter turn down at the bottom of the panel. We have to put our mirror cap on. Remember, we have a plug here. Also, you wanna make sure that your mirror heating wires are out through here, so you don't have to dig through this little guy. We'll go ahead and plug this in. These also, these two tabs here and here are the tabs that click into the housing. So make sure that those are good to go. So we will get our mirror cap on. Goes on the same way it came off. It sort of slides into place. Don't get your beard caught in it either. You do want to be careful as you roll this over, make sure it clips into place and everybody's lined up properly. And finally, we'll put our mirror glass back in. Hopefully, you did a better job than I did and you don't need to worry about having broken mirror glass. Get our heater plugged in just in case we need that. And carefully so it doesn't shatter. Snap your glass back in. Usually going back in is no problem. It's getting it out. It's a super pain in the butt. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our key on and test it and see if it works. You are also going to need to do the driver's side as well. The process for doing the driver's side is almost exactly the same. The only additional thing that you'll need to do is install the mirror switch that has the fold up function on it. And that just pops right out and you can pop the new one right in. Next up, we need to do our coatings and our adaptations. Normally, this is where I would break out VCDS and go step by step with it to activate all the power fold mirror functions. However, However, with Mark 8, the electrics module is security protected and VCDS can't unlock it. So you have a couple of choices. You can take it to the dealer and have them do the coding and the adaptation. You can be extra crafty and probably find a way that you can use VCDS and some other resources to unlock it. But to be blunt, it's a little bit sketchy and I'm not super comfortable sharing it. Luckily, there's a pretty easy solution that we have and that's using OBD11. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on using OBD11 to make all this happen. Now, before getting started with OBD11, you need to make sure that your account information is fully up to date and you have a two-step or stage two authenticator app on your phone. You're going to need to have both of those things worked out in order to get SFD unlocked to work. We'll go ahead and connect to our car. Reading control modulators. Okay, now you can hit the tap to scan right here in the middle. You'd like to scan all the modules, but we know where we're going. So we are gonna hit this little guy right down here in the bottom. Central Electrics is the module we're going to do our adaptation in, but before we do that, we are going to search by ID number, or sort by ID number, I should say, and driver's door. We're gonna go to long coding, and I think if we just look for powerful mirrors, we should be able to find it. Mirror heater, mirror memory, lowering mirror, mirror folding. So mirror folding, installed. Mirror comfort folding, active. And then we are going to slide to right, long coding, success, excellent. Insert your own Borat impression there. Now we are gonna go back. We're gonna go back to control units and we're gonna look for 52, which is passenger door. But we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna scroll on to mirror folding, installed, mirror comfort, active. Too bad we couldn't turn on the heavy tank function. Slide to right, long coding, success. Now we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to control units and we need to find number nine, which is central electrics. And we do have a fault code, but we don't care about that. Now, if you scroll to the bottom a little bit, you'll see a box that says SFD protection. Click that, and this is gonna automatically unlock the module for you without any extra effort or sketchy websites or anything like that. If you really wanna find it with VCDS, do some research and you will be able to find it. 
So we can go ahead and unlock that. So here you can see it's unlocking our control module with great success. Slide that down, go into adaptation. Now you'll notice this is all in German. If you would like to see what all this actually means and how to not butcher saying it, swing over to Google Translate and you can do that there. When it comes to the adaptation, what we're really doing is telling the electrics module to fold the mirrors when we lock the car. We're also turning on a menu inside of our display to turn that feature on and off. This can be a little bit confusing because it's a lot of long German wording. So what I'm gonna do is in the description of this video, I will write out the things you need to change and what all of your mirror settings need to be. If you speak German, this is probably not a problem. If you don't speak German like me, this can be a little confusing. Hopefully seeing it in text will make it a little easier. Now, depending on when you're watching this, if you go to the apps tab, OBD 11 might have it already added in to where basically you hit one button and it makes all those changes for you. Now you do need credits to do that, but it makes it pretty easy. Okay, we also wanna go back in and lock that module back up. So if you go back into 09, the control units under vehicle and go to SFD protection and then lock it. Now your module is locked back up. I don't think it matters if you actually do lock it, but I would go ahead and do it either which way. Now on your touch screen, if you go to vehicle, mirrors in the exterior, you have lowering in reverse and fold in when locking. You need to make sure that's on. Otherwise they won't fold when locking. But one of those things we just turned on was actually activating these choices in this menu right here. Well, we did it. This might be the first Golf R in the US with power fold mirrors. Mad excited, so thankful. This is one of those mods on my seven and a half that I absolutely love. Now we only used a handful of parts in this video. I'm gonna be sure to link all of that stuff up for you guys, the left mirror, the right mirror, and the switch. I'm also gonna throw links to those aspherical mirrors and to the dynamic turn signals down below because really it does make sense if you're gonna do any of that to just go ahead and do it all at the same time. And as always, big thanks to my man, Paul. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day. Happy powerful mirroring. And I'll talk to you again next time. We gotta try it one more time too, watch. Lock. Now you can tell from across the parking lot whether your car's locked or not which helps my paranoia. So it's awesome.